G'day guys, I'm Ben and I'm here to talk to you about something revolutionary. It's the, this thing. Uh, this is the latest and greatest. It's the smallest, the lightest gimbal from DJI. Okay, so here it is in its small and lightweight form factor. Now you can say the gimbals have been around for a while. This is the fifth iteration of the DJI OM. Now traditionally gimbals are used for stable video footage, but this guy does a whole bunch more. And I'm gonna show you a little bit more about what it can do very soon. Now let's talk about the difference between this one and the OM4, its previous model. The biggest difference is the weight and size. It's over a third smaller and a third lighter, but just as strong and just as powerful. And there's the other obvious one, which is that built-in selfie stick. And then there's some really cool, fun features that they've added to the app as well, which we'll get to in a moment. Now for most of my video work, I tend to use a lot bigger gimbals, a lot bigger cameras, and the OM4 was just a little bit too bulky to add to all of the other bulky things that I have. Now I'm not gonna say that it's gonna replace my professional equipment just yet, but based on how small it is, I can see it being useful in capturing everyday moments like this. Okay, so it's super simple. We're basically just gonna unlock it, open it up and snap it in. Turn it on, it's done, there it is. Now straight out of the box, that balancing tutorial will get you by for pretty much most of your applications and pretty much every phone that, uh, that is out on the market today, all the weights seem to be able to distribute pretty evenly and easily on the OM5. But if you do wanna dial it in just a little bit, I'd advise a couple of things. One is to go through the calibration tool inside the app. And two, just make sure your phone is centered and balanced when it's hooked on. You don't want it to hang off to the edge. Let's talk about what comes in the box. Okay, so inside the box, you've got things like a tripod, which my daughter thought was absolutely fantastic, just watching it spin. Uh, there's also a small bag that comes with it, which I'll no doubt lose to the same daughter. It also comes with a lanyard strap, a charging cable. There's also a small riser pad for smaller phones and iPads and other different things that don't fit quite the same on the little magnetic connector. But let's talk about our little magnetic friend here. It is super strong and it can't be understated because you can stick it to things like your fridge and watch TV on it if you like. And the other thing it comes with is a selfie stick or as they like to call it, an extension rod, which sounds kind of kinky. It's built in, which is pretty crazy considering it basically slides back into the body of itself, which is, I don't know how, where do they store all of the electronic stuff? Where is that? It's somewhere else, obviously. Um, so I think that's pretty unique and I found that that came in super handy. Um, it came in super handy because I wanted to run this thing through its paces and I thought what better way to do that than to create a short little film and see what I can do with it. So this is going to be our scene here, our little rainforest short film scene and uh, I'm choosing this spot here even though we're really close to a whole bunch of houses and a whole bunch of roads and other things. It kind of looks like we're not. And so hopefully we can make something of it with um, the different camera angles and the gimbal. And we'll see how we go. Now, before we get to the short film, I just want to let you know that I filmed it in both landscape and portrait orientation. But for the purposes of showing you the behind the scenes as well, I'll just show you the portrait version. And then after I'll go through some of the techniques and features I use to create it. So here it is. So that's it, short and sweet. But let's have another quick look at those scenes again and we'll take a deeper dive into them. So let's start off with the diner zoom feature, which in Hollywood they commonly call the dolly zoom. So once you've slid over to the diner zoom feature, you're gonna use the active track part to draw a box around your subject. 
Once you've done that, all you can do is just hit record and all the instructions in this case, we just move out and it automatically zooms in for you. Now keep in mind this is a digital zoom in so you are going to lose a little bit of quality in the final video edit but nonetheless it's still a pretty cool effect and it's still nice to have as an option to include in your videos. Okay so I think it's time we have a look at that big extension rod. I know it still sounds strange to say that out loud but basically this is the easiest way to get those low to ground shots without having to break your back. Now the extension was great for not just the low shots, but also for the high shots too. And I took it a step further and I actually unscrewed the tripod that came with the OM5 and screwed on an extra extension to get that drone slash crane shot. Now I can see active track being used for a number of different reasons, not just for just keeping your subject in the center of the frame, but I can see this being really useful for things like vlogging or being able to do things when you're just alone by yourself. You can film yourself and you don't really need anyone else there to help you. So if you don't want to go through the rigmarole of making a whole short film like I just did, uh, one of the really easy ways of getting around that is to use a shot guide. And so you can see I'm just looking over at these trees here and basically all you have to do is just point at a certain scene and it will start recognising that scene for you and then offer you some guides to help make your own film. And I'm not sure what sort of sorcery they're using to understand how they can recognize the scenes, but it is pretty intuitive and there are a million different locations you can choose from. And the way it works is it basically shows you a quick video of the type of shot you should get, and then you can basically just copy it. And then once you've recorded it, you can just jump straight in, have a look at how it compares to the tutorial video. And if you don't like it, just hit the retake button. But if you are happy, just move on to the next scene. So as you can see, it's pretty simple and easy to use. And if you don't really understand much about composition or creating angles and things like that, and you don't really consider yourself a creative person, this is a really great way to get started. And then from there, once you understand a few of the ins and outs, you can start to get a little bit more creative with it. So I think it's a really great concept and I'm really excited to see what people can create from this and to see what the future holds for things like the OM5 and its future iterations. What do you reckon? Is this something that's going to go in your bag, your old bag of tricks? I'm happy to now say that this is going to be sitting in my bag, uh, especially now that things like Instagram Reels and TikTok uh, are a real thing now. That's that's definitely picked up a lot of momentum over the last 12 months. So I really feel like if you're a creator of those types of things, this thing could be quite a handy tool for you. So that's it for me. If you like it, subscribe, do all those things, give a thumbs up and everything. I'll see you on Instagram. Come and see what I've created with this and I will see you in the next one. Chaz.